Well, good evening and welcome to another Spirit Life broadcast. I'm Pastor Ken, and we're so glad that you joined in with us this Wednesday evening. Come on, let's say Romans 8 and 2 together. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made you and I free from the law of sin and death. Spirit life, Zoe life, abundant life, the God kind of life, the life that Jesus died for is the life we're always striving for. And the law of life that's on the inside of you, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, has made you free from the law of sin and death. And here at Spirit Life, uh, we love to uh, exalt the Lord's Supper because it has uh, in its essence the life of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. In its essence, it tells of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, as often as you do this, as often as you partake of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. And we We've said over and over again, that word show means to confirm, to announce, to proclaim, to testify, amen, of all the wonders of the gospel of Jesus Christ and of all the wonders of the cross, amen. So let's partake together tonight. The bread represents your healing, by whose stripes you are healed. The cup, which represents your eternal forgiveness, amen. Uh, the blood has been shed without the shedding of blood. Uh, the word of God is clear. There is no remission of sins. But because Jesus shed his precious blood, you and I are forgiven. Amen. He took our sins and our sicknesses and gave us his eternal righteousness. We are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21, uh, who... who uh, knew no sin, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so we, we testify that we are the righteousness of God because of the uh, sacrifice that Jesus made at Calvary. Amen? So let's rejoice in that tonight and let us partake of our healing and the celebration of the forgiveness of sins and being made in position the righteousness of God in Christ. Praise his holy name. Now, uh, let's turn over to Exodus chapter 17. There's some interesting uh, scriptures here. We know that the Old Testament conceals the new, amen, and the New Testament reveals uh, what was in the Old Testament. And so we see uh, Exodus 17, verse 6. We see a God telling Moses to strike the rock. Now, he strikes the rock uh, twice. God tells him to uh, strike the rock. And um, let's see what happens. It says, Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb. And thou shalt strike, and thou shalt strike the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And so we see that the word rock here means boulder, and it's a type of uh, uh, Jesus. A member over there in the book of uh, Matthew. Uh, uh, Jesus tells Peter and upon this rock I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail over the rock who is Jesus Christ and the rock of revelation that comes with the knowledge of the truth when you and I accept Jesus Christ and so Moses strikes the rock and his rod represents judgment 
Moses' rod represents judgment. And we understand that Jesus absorbed the wrath of God for us in his body on the tree. That he, he took our sins. He took our sicknesses. He took our judgment. And uh, he was uh, taken into everlasting darkness. He was put in the pit. And he stayed there three days and three nights until he rose out of hell. Amen. He rose out of the abyss. But uh, Aaron's rod represents judgment. Amen. The rock represents Jesus. And uh, the, the propitiation that he would be for the sins of the whole world. And this is what 1 John 2 says. 1 John 2 uh, says about Jesus. It says uh, here over here in 1 John 2. It says, uh, my little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So when Moses strikes the rock this time, he is uh, declaring, or it is a picture of the judgment of God that's going to come on Jesus Christ at the cross where he becomes the propitiation. And the word propitiation means he satisfied the wrath of God. He absorbs God's wrath on the cross and he becomes the one who satisfies God's wrath so that God is no longer angry with you and I. Amen. In exchange for that, we are now God's favorite. Jesus became the propitiation. He became the judgment of God at Calvary so that you and I might walk in the free favors of God. And it says over here in the book of Ephesians, uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 1, where it talks about uh, you and I have been accepted, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Amen. So you and I have been accepted in the beloved. Amen. And uh, verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. So you and I are accepted in the beloved. Amen. Because Jesus took our sins and our judgment and in exchange, we receive his free favor and an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Now, let's go over here to Numbers. Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. Just a quick little study tonight uh, on the types and the shadows of the Old Testament. And uh, we have in Numbers chapter 20, uh, God tells Moses to strike, uh, to speak to the rock. Excuse me, Numbers chapter 20 and verse 8. And he says, take the rod, he's talking to Moses, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them Water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beast strength. Moses took the rock from before the Lord. Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now ye rebels. Uh-oh. It looks like Moses is a little angry. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, 
and their beasts also. However, the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Now, this is a, a different scenario we see. Uh, God tells Moses, speak to the rock. And uh, this is a type of the spirit of faith. The just shall live by faith. We confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. We believe with all our heart God raised him from the dead. And it is the way of the new covenant. It is the way of grace. It is the way of faith. It is the way that we live now. The just shall live by faith. And uh, Moses is uh, negated from going in. And, and that whole generation did not go into the promised land because the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Jesus represents the end of the, uh, of the law. Amen. And now we are not saved by our works. We are saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, or should I say the finished work of Jesus Christ. All that it entails, that's how we are born again. And so uh, 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 it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 13, we have in the same spirit of faith as it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. See, God was telling Moses, just speak to the rock and the abundance will come because I am your provider. And when you declare things by faith, you will see your provision. But Moses struck the rock in anger like he was told to the first time. But the first time represented Jesus beating on the cross. The first time it represented the judgment of God. This time it represents the just shall live by faith. That Jesus, Jesus and the generation of grace, we live by faith. Amen. We don't live by the works of the law, but we live by faith. Amen. Mark 11, 23 and 24 says, <clears throat> uh, say to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. And don't doubt, but believe the things that you're saying are going to come to pass, and you're going to have what you say. Moses was told to speak to the rock, representing our faith is released by our words. And we see the waters, amen, living waters springing up out of our reborn spirit, amen, waters of healing. Waters of blessing, waters of deliverance, waters of prosperity, amen. Waters of the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, amen, temperance, amen. We see the manifestations of the gifts of the spirit, the manifestations of the fruit of the spirit, amen, by the rivers of God. Well, uh, we would love to see you Sunday morning at 10 here at uh, Spirit Life Ministries. We're located at 3401 Governor Prince Boulevard, right here in the heart of Wilmington, Delaware. Amen. If we've been a blessing to you, you can feel free to uh, send any gifts to Spirit Life Ministries International uh, org. Amen. And we would uh, receive your offerings so graciously. Until the next time, the Lord continue to bless you and keep you safe. And remember, the law of life has made you a winner and freed you from the law of sin and death. Amen.